Hello and welcome to episode 32 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. It's been a while since we last recorded holidays and I don't even know what happened last weekend. I have no memory. <laughs> I think I was too drunk. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Did you drink last weekend? It is fun when Nick does drink. <laughs> when we were in Vegas, we, uh, Nick, on the rare occasion, drunk, and we watched South Park, and it was heck of funny. <laughs> what, weren't we watching the Warcraft episode? Yeah, that's what came on. That and... shit's funny enough, I agree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess I was finding it even more amusing <laughs> in my po- intoxicated state. Yeah, it's awesome. I've yet to see Nick drunk, so. Oh, you weren't there? No. Oh, it was just us three. We yeah, had... I remember the, the the one night I was there, you decided to stay in the hotel room. <laughs> yeah. While we went down to the hot tub. Yeah. And had debates about the N-word and all different <laughs> kinds of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. So, uh, what's going on? Not much. <laughs> I don't like it when you ask me that. <laughs> it throws me off. Brad was recently promoted to senior tech guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, because he came up with the format for the next two episodes so quickly. That's what I do. Do you have any treasure? Oh, yeah. I don't have any because I've been too involved in this game show. <laughs> uh, speaking of the game show, I sent Matty G, uh, a.k.a. Gambit. It's not capital yet. Uh, <laughs> on a little treasure hunt. And uh, he went last night and he felt kind of weird. Going around the big lots because I hit rehid the clue outside of big lots, and uh, he said, I feel weird. Uh, I feel weird, man. I don't want people to get me on suspicion of mis- mischievous activity. Well, of course, he would be the one because he looks so much like a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for my daughter, he's a teenager or dresses like one. So he left the scene. Came back this morning with his dog, so it doesn't look as suspicious. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he's thinking way too much into this. And so he's like, I couldn't find it, so I gave him an f- even further clue saying it's by a fire hydrant. He took a picture of the fire hydrant. I still can't find it. And then five minutes later, he sent me a text, never mind, I found it. <laughs> and then that led him to a little park, like a little dog park. And, he, of course, he was glad to have Remy then. And he was able to walk the dog and find all the items that I laid out for him. And Maybe it, what we should do is on the game show, okay, the actual game show, is just recap everything so it leads up to it. So then we just tell, like, from beginning to end, it'll probably just take, like, 15 minutes. Okay. And we'll recap everything and, and while it's all fresh in our minds. Yeah, and, and you'll probably, the audience is like, what's going on? What's this game show? Check out the uh, Facebook page at Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Uh, I had the contestants who, uh, who are competing post videos and stuff. It's pretty cool. Check it out. Yep. So here's my first bit of treasure. You probably don't know this game. How about if I know this game? No. I don't have to I actually play this game. Did you? Yeah. Is it fun? Uh, it's like um, Baldur's Gate. You know Baldur's Gate? No. Uh, Diablo? Like Top View? Kind of. It's kind of like that where you, it's the game is Champions Return to Arms. It's short for Champions of Norath Return to Arms. Uh, Dick Jones actually had me play this with him, <laughs> and uh, I didn't like it at all. It's uh, you go around looting stuff and get uh, sell items, and I'm not really fond of it. Where you find it? Uh, Citrus Heights Yard Cell. Oh, okay. Three bucks. Cool. And here's my next item. Where'd you get this? I got both of these at Dimple. Then why was it a secret? Because I don't want to tell you where I got it. All right. This one? Yeah. Oh, I guess you could see it. <laughs> Rocketeer. The Rocket Who? <laughs> yeah, two ninety nine's about right. <laughs> and then this one, I was debating on keeping it or not. Oh, man. Oh, you uh, found Sim Ant finally. That's tight. Sim Ant. Two ninety nine. Yep. Wow. Great. Great game. Fun. I bet you when I play it now, it won't be as fun, but... If you want to keep it, I don't care. Yeah, I don't, I'll play, I'll okay. play it once and then give it up. All right. So, since I don't have the 20 sided die, it got lost somewhere in my wife's purse. Uh, I'm going to have Brandon throw up three numbers, and I get to choose a prize of that and a punishment for that. So, let me go over to the prize wheel. 
which is saved on the computer. <laughs> Thanks to Nick Jones. <laughs> three numbers. One, two, three. Oh, serious? Okay. Um, you get minus five dollars being added to the bank. On my next treasure? On your next. That's my punishment? Yeah. Tight. And my prize, I'll pick ten dollars. And a ten dollar increase? No, just ten dollars cash. <laughs> One is five dollars, two is ten dollars, and then three is five dollars added to bank. So the punishment would be minus five dollars. Because I made it on one. Oh, okay. So, what's going on with the game of the week? So, uh, you get any further in Lufia, Nick? Yeah, I played quite a bit um, a few nights ago. Uh, when I when I when we first did the game of the week, I was um, my party was Guy, Artie, Maxim, and Selene or Salon, however you guys want to say your name. And I had just completed the the Tower of Truth, which was a challenge that Iris, the the mysterious, uh, somewhat omniscient character, uh, had challenged uh, Selene and Maxim to accomplish to, to test their love for each other. Basically, they passed the test, so. Um, so Iris and both Selene and uh, Maxim realize that their love for each other is true. Uh, after that, um, I have to go to this dragon mountain to save the elder of Kaid or Chaid or however you want to say the uh, town's name. It's C H A E D. Chode. <laughs> sure, Chode. The elder of Chode. Uh, <laughs> so after you uh, com- complete dragon Mount- dragon mountain, you kill the the, the dragon that's uh, holding the elder hostage. Uh, not hostage, but captive, I guess. Uh, the elder provides the party with this mermaid's key, and uh, you use the mermaid's key to go to this underwater city called Primary. And at, at this point, the Exerion, which is the ship that keeps getting bigger and bigger, uh, thanks to Lexus, Doctor Lexus, uh, is a submarine. So you're able to go underwater and use this mermaid's key to get to the city of Primary. You meet uh, Queen Marla there, and she has some information about the dual blade. The dual blade is basically what determines the fate between the humans and the Sinistrals. Um, But before she uh, divulges that information, uh, you have to help her rescue her daughter, who has been also held captive. Uh, After you beat this ghost ship, uh, her daughter's freed, and um, you get to this huge temple where the dual blade is. I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but the game glitches at this point. Hmm. I, I actually looked into it. Apparently, the American version of the game, for for whatever reason, it wasn't quite complete on this particular scene. You have to walk through this temple to get to the dual blade, and there's just a bunch of black black squares everywhere. I remember that. You remember that? Yeah. I, what I read was that the uh, the European version of the game actually did not have all the black squares everywhere, but the American version did, so... You kind of had to guess where you were supposed to go. Like you, you'd go up, and then you hit a wall, and then you say, "Okay, well, I guess I got to go left or right here." And you go left, and then you hit a wall, and then you go up, and, and so on and so on until you finally reach the dual blade. That's funny because I thought that was supposed that was done on purpose to make it harder to reach. <laughs> I, I, I kind of thought that too, but my curiosity got to me, so I looked into it and I found it, it, it was just an American glitch. And okay. The European version of the game was actually done correctly. So anyway, you get to the the dual blade in this temple, and Maxim uh, feels this really strong force, and the blade starts ringing, so there, there's something going on there. They're not entirely sure what, but one of the Sinistrals, his name is Deos, uh, gets fucking pissed that, that a human might actually be able to wield the dual blade. So he creates this huge floating island from which the, uh, the Sinistrals seem to be uh, hanging out. And they destroy the town of Cade or Chode, as Brad said, <laughs> <laughs> just to demonstrate how powerful they are. So after this, you know the the, the party survives the uh, the attack on Chode, and uh, they decide to go back to Doctor Lexus to turn the Exerion, that ship, into an airship. In order to do this, they have to go to the kingdom of of Grazi, which you kind of learn about a little bit in, the, in like the middle stages of the game. It's some northern kingdom that has some sort of uh, mission to take over the world, but basically their technology is very advanced, and uh, you don't really learn a whole lot more about them other than that. So you infiltrate this uh, this kingdom of Grazi with the intent of stealing an engine to uh, power the airship that uh, Dr. Lexus is going to create. So after you uh, get to the kingdom of Grazi, 
you uh, destroy this huge armored tank that they have built that's supposed to be able to win any sort of battle. Uh, you steal the engine that's capable of um, flying the airship. The the king and uh, the kingdom of Drax basically blows up his entire kingdom because he's just so pissed that these, these four seemingly just normal humans just took down his biggest piece of machinery. So he annihilates his own kingdom because he's just upset. It's kind of a weird thing to do if you ask me, but... So anyway, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, I brought the engine back to Lexus. Lexus built the built the uh, the airship. I'm now at the uh, village of Narwick, which I believe is probably going to be the last village in the game. Uh, seeing that I'm like right where the the floating island is, maybe there's gonna I'm sure the, the floating islands are gonna come into it somehow. But I believe I'm probably a few hours away. But of course, I still got to do the ancient caves. So. Mm -hmm. I yeah. still got lots of lots of hours of gaming to go. I'm sure. Tight. Yeah. So the game I've been playing has been Legend of Zelda: Link Between Two Worlds. Have you been playing that too, Brad? Yes, I have. Uh, it's pretty unfortunate that the game is pretty short. Yeah. So uh, that game is pretty short. Uh, you get most of the items in the well. You can get most of the items in the beginning of the game. You rent them from this dude named Ravi. And uh, he takes over your house. Basically, the game's a, a sequel to A Link to the Past. Uh, it takes place hundreds of years in the future. Uh, I really don't want to spoil a lot of the about the game out there, but it plays a lot like Link to the Past. It has the same kind of feel. The enemies are, are the same. Of course, they're redone to look pretty. Uh, pretty a lot cool. of the bosses, like some of them, are similar, and they they're upgraded versions of the old bosses mm -hmm. from the first game. And they're pretty badass. Yeah, that was cool. Um, I like that first boss, and yeah. then the boss in the town. That was awesome. Uh, highly recommended game. Not very challenging at all, though. <laughs> I tried to play through it on hero mode, but all the enemies do is take away more life. And yeah. I guess there's some items switched around, like a second quest. But uh, I've mainly just been uh, trying to street past people. And uh, yeah, but overall, great game. Uh, I wouldn't say it's. I'd say it's, if not on par, a little bit less than Link to the Past. It's still good, but in my opinion, too short and too easy. Way too easy. That game's heck of easy. Yeah, the last boss is push over do you think it's easy because you it played very similar to link to the past though and you guys are already very good at that game i think the main my main gripe is that enemies didn't take away as much life as they did in link to the past mm, okay that's what it is because i still if i play through link to the past there'll be points where i could die still because the enemies are so powerful but mm. this one is just like a pushover i see and i guess playing on hero mode would do it but they should have been able to do that right from the get-go you don't have you shouldn't have to be able to beat the game to get the hardest difficulty. But it's still a good game. So what are you doing top five this week? Top five drinks. <laughs> it could be any kind of drink. Any kind of drink you want. Any as long as you're able to drink it, you could put it down. Okay. I could start. Number five for me, Diet Rockstar. Crisp, delicious. <laughs> Made from Pepsi, or Pepsi is the one who uh, took it over. They're the, the distributor, and like that nasty, gross monster stuff out there. <laughs> I mean, Monster's cool. It's got the claw marks and everything, and then <laughs> they made a monster version called Chaos, which is hecka awesome. <laughs> but it's just disgusting to me. They, t <laughs> they all taste the same. Not to me, they do. They, they don't taste the same to me. To me, they do. It's all the same to me, but... Uh... My number five is going to have to be Sprite. So crisp. <laughs> so clean. It's got a crisp, clean taste. Feels like there's a basketball game going on inside my mouth when I drink it. <laughs> That's such a retarded drink. Oh, man. It's Sprite? Yes. <laughs> they sell it in the Mexican stores with in a glass bottle. What do they call it? Sprite? <laughs> no, they call it Sprite. Oh. <laughs> it's heck of good. Um, this drink goes best with Chinese food, especially Chinese buffets. Huh. <laughs> Is that all you have to say about Sprite? Yes. All right. 
Uh, my number five is Pepsi, just good old fashioned Pepsi. That's what I'm talking about. A real, <laughs> a real soft drink on this list. <laughs> right. Now with Pepsi, it, there definitely is a difference between Pepsi and Coca Cola, and Pepsi is far superior to Coca Cola, if you ask me. Oh, oh I just got a bone. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, but the commercials are a ton better. Those freaking Coke commercials with the polar bears rolling around, those just piss me off. Yeah. I hate those commercials. Why do you look at me when you say yeah like that? Because <laughs> you said Sprite was your, on your list. Sprite is a Coke product. Yeah. I know. You could have went with Sierra Miss. Exactly. Was... Sierra Miss is in his crisps. Oh, man. Or 7-Up. <laughs> yeah, 7-Up. Diet Cherry 7-Up. <laughs> Put that on your number five. What about um, Storm? Remember Storm? We're not talking about Storm. We're talking about <laughs> Sierra Mist and Diet Cherry. <laughs> Wasn't Storm the the Citrus the before? one before Sierra Mist? Yeah, yeah, and they had that came out around when Phantom Menace came out, and it sucked. <laughs> That's why they it went bankrupt. <laughs> so anyway, uh, with Pepsi, there are many varieties. I don't care for the diet fashion, which I'm sure Brandon does, but man, the Wild Cherry Pepsi. Oh man. Woo! That stuff is killer. It is. And the, the, the best thing about Pepsi, CM Punk has a tattoo right yeah, on his shoulder. Yeah, he does. Pepsi tattoo right there, so you know it's got to be good. Best in the world. Yes. He's got a Coke tattoo on his testicle. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yep. Where, where did you learn that? Did you see it? From Wikipedia. Oh. <laughs> the, the most reliable website out there. <laughs> so that's my number five, Pepsi. Number four on my list is the best Mountain Dew flavor in the world, and that's Game Fuel. Mm, that was an HM for me. That was my honorable mention as well, but it's not year-round. Yeah, it's it's not even year-round. It's, it's like, like Halo round, whenever a new Halo game Whenever a gay-ass Xbox game comes out or a retarded <laughs> PC game like Mine or War, World of Warcraft comes out. Oh, man. Why do you think uh, Pepsi induces Xbox so much? I don't know, and I don't care. <laughs> it's kind of like the, the the lover that you have who like had sex with 50 other guys and you finally get her and you're like i don't care about the past <laughs> so back to game fuel uh it's, it tastes like we've said it many times like a cherry icy melted, melted down. down and carbonated and packaged for your with taste caf buds caffeine yeah it's delicious it really does taste good. It is a bummer that it's not around very often. I've actually only had it for the first time within the last couple of months when uh, the Xbox One came out. I was After that, I was looking for it daily. I found it one time, and I never found it. I again. know. I can't find it either. So I've had two 20-ounce bottles <laughs> of Game Fuel in my life. My number four is going to be Fresca. Ugh, gross. What are you talking about? Zero calories. Ugh. It's a rebel because it doesn't say diet fresca. <laughs> it's naturally fresca. That's, zero calories. Zero sugar. You say that it's being ballsy or whatever because it doesn't say diet. Would you say it's, it's what? A, it's a rebel. Oh, it's a rebel. It's trying to trick people. It, if it tricked me, that's why I hate it. See, it's trickery going on. <laughs> I, I find it very refreshing. That's another crisp drink. What is that? Is that a lemon lime too? It's a grapefruit. It's like squirt. Oh, okay. Zero calorie it's, squirt. It's, it's like a shitty version of squirt. I, I bet you it's Coca-Cola's version. It is. It's oh, a Coca-Cola okay. product. <laughs> Good one, Coca-Cola. <laughs> Fresca is amazing. It goes great with the baked tilapia or any other white fish. Or a penis. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a female. <laughs> a penis or a vagina. <laughs> I'll try that one tonight. Uh, my number four is milk. I know that a lot of people have different feelings about milk, but I just love milk. Uh, it's the perfect complement to anything sweet. Well, anything chocolatey sweet. Chocolatey that is. sweet, yeah. Um, it also goes great with cereal. I love cereal. I can't have cereal without milk, so got to give milk some love. Nothing goes better than uh, the milk with a warm slice of pie. Um, again, there's many different varieties of milk. You got the chocolate milk. You can mix it with strawberry syrup. Mm, that shit's so good. <laughs> so that's my number four number is milk. Uh, you bring a good point. Milk goes great with cereal. But the only time I could have something sweet with milk 
is if I make a bowl of milk and then put my sweet thing in it and eat it like cereal. Oh, that's another thing. You could dump cookies in that shit. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, that's what I used to do. I'd get a bowl of milk and just throw like 10 Oreos in there. Hell yeah. And see, then, I can't, see, I don't know. Me and Brandon can't drink milk no. out of a glass. Really? We have to have it in a bowl. <laughs> like, we'll put a brownie in the bowl and then just put some milk yeah. on it and eat, eat it that way. But we, we I don't know. It's I think weird. Milk, milk, another thing about milk, it's like the only product that I like the fat-free version of it. Mm. Like, I don't like 1%, 2%. I definitely don't like that vitamin, vitamin D shit, But no. skim milk just tastes so good to me. Huh. It's weird. That's cool. Yeah. Bull milk. <laughs> Number three on my list is Go Girl. <laughs> See, how manly is that? <laughs> Go Girl. <laughs> That's two energy drinks on your list so far. It is. Wow. Spoiler alert, and it's the last one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Go Girl is. it tastes like strawberry soda to me. Uh, it's diet, it's an appetite suppressant for the ladies, and for the men, it just gives you beautiful energy. It says it right on the can. <laughs> wow. It doesn't say, you know, for the men, beautiful energy. It just says beautiful energy on the can. <laughs> That's tight. And it comes in a 12-ounce can instead of the giant 16-ounce cans, like the manly, the manly energy drinks. So when you're just filling something in the morning instead of coffee, just have it go, girl. My number three is going to be Ruby Red Squirt. Yeah, that stuff is good. Fresco with the Ruby Red Grapefruit Twist. How no. dare you? Don't. <laughs> Stop that shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only drink that has a Ruby Red version because I love Ruby Red Grapefruit. Oh, yeah. So uh, I put that on my list. It goes great with a lightly fried pork chop and some homemade Alfredo <laughs> sauce with angel hair pasta. Have you tested all these uh, meal combinations out? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's how. I, that's why I put it on my list. Remember when we had like an endless supply of ruby red squirt? Yes. Our grandma. What was it? A truck? Some truck um, tipped over something in the street, <laughs> and a bunch of bottles of ruby red squirt fell out in Arizona iced tea candies. <laughs> And so she just packed her whole car up with it and uh, came to our house and unloaded it. It was awesome. <laughs> I remember Aaron kept asking, hey, you have any more of those Arizona iced tea candy? <laughs> we opened up our backpack and there was like a million in there. Yeah. Uh, he was fond of the mango flavor. Yeah. That's that's my number three. All right. My number three is orange juice. It's uh, my go-to uh, beverage for breakfast when I'm not consuming cereal. Hmm. Basically, you know, you know, steak, potatoes, eggs, all that good shit. Orange juice goes great with that. Uh, it's also a great source of vitamin C. So if you're feeling a little in a in a mood to get something healthy in you, orange juice does that job. <laughs> or quite, if you got well. scurvy. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, another thing, another drink that comes with many different varieties. Uh, you can get it with no pulp. You can get it with some pulp, or you can get it with hella pulp. Uh, I think I. I don't really care. I like it anyway. Some people are really picky about how much pulp they like in their orange juice. I kind of like it right in the middle, but I can drink it anyway. It's it's good no matter what. So it's also a drink that pretty much tastes the same regardless of whether you buy the generic kind or the fucking five dollar or gallon kind. It pretty much always <laughs> tastes the same to me. I like that Donald Duck orange juice. That's the t the cheapest shit, right? Yeah, yeah it, it still tastes good. So that's my number three is the orange. It's just straight up orange juice. I bet you peep the listeners like, why the fuck are they talking about drink? <laughs> all these drinks? <laughs> We're like, you're checking the download. Is this treasure honey for nostalgia? <laughs> <laughs> I myself am a pulp free man. I like pulp. You changed. <laughs> uh, number two on my list is good old fashioned water. Nice. Uh, crisp, refreshing. It's all those. Yeah. What would you pair water with? Um, by itself. Oh, you don't have a meal ticket with no, it? No, okay. not with, with water. Water is great on its own. Yeah, your body needs water, and it's just the second best drink to me in the world. Yep. The second best drink in the world to me is going to have to be good old-fashioned Coke. Oh, you fucking... <laughs> Douchebag. What the hell? Coke. <laughs> was that what I said? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Dang, it's hurting now. <laughs> I feel like grazed it. Coke uh, co goes great in a glass bottle. Ow. <laughs> uh, Take that shit outside. Yeah. <laughs> you go to Brian Gerber's house and oh, jerk off to some Coke. <laughs> Just pictures of it. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, tastes great coming out of a glass bottle. It pairs with best with pizza. Nick, what's your number one? <laughs> or your number two? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not done yet. I want to hear this. It goes best with pizza, especially pepperoni or supreme. And that's my number two. My number two is another version of Mountain Dew. It's Voltage. Uh, Voltage is Mountain Dew with a raspberry twist. Uh, it's been on tap at my local Circle, Circle K for the last two years. Fucking Circle K has these 44 cent, <laughs> or excuse me, 44 ounce cups. They're uh, styrofoam cups. They're called Polar Pops. Fucking 89 cents a pop. I get them like probably a good four or five times a week. It sucks so hard because they taste so fucking good. I can't turn it down. Uh, I wish it costed more, but it's just because it would it would keep me from going there all the time. But the <laughs> voltage is just amazing, especially coming out of the tap like that. I never had it out of the tap. It's oh, heck of good. It's heck of good. For, I mean, eighty nine cents. You can't go wrong. Go can, give it a try. Can you? Um, <clears throat> I know I've gotten a polar pop from uh, the one by my work. Can you get refills, or do they charge you every time? What do you mean refill? Like if you bring your own container, sometimes they'll they say it's all oh, it's only forty cents. Uh, you can bring well, it's a styrofoam cup, so it's not really made to be used for refills. Mm-hmm. But you can bring it in; it's like ten cents cheaper, it's oh, like okay. seventy nine cents. But Uh-oh. I mean, for ten cents, yeah. you might as well just get a new one. Yeah. Um, I, so basically, it's Mountain Dew, so you know it's thoroughly ca- caffeinated, good good fuel for those late night gaming <laughs> sessions. Uh, it's also extremely sweet, so I mean, if you got a sweet tooth, no need to buy any candy or chocolate to go with it. That's that'll serve all your needs. And with the raspberry in there, it's got a little bit of kick to it as well. So that's my number two is Mountain Dew Voltage. Number one on my mm. list is Diet Pepsi. That's number one on my list too. Gross. <laughs> uh, nothing beats a crisp. There's different varieties of Diet Pepsi. I could have made a list just with Pepsi products on here. But uh, there's Diet Pepsi. There's Diet Wild Cherry Pepsi, which is amazing. Um there's diet caffeine free Pepsi when you want to have a little Pepsi before you go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Pepsi is just great all around. Uh, Pepsi, Wild Cherry Pepsi, like Nick said. Uh, I, I'm not too fond of the Pepsi Next. That's ridiculous and stupid. Uh, but what's th- the difference? I don't get what's the difference between that and diet Pepsi. I think. Pepsi Next is supposed to taste better because they put a little bit of sugar in it instead of the fake sugar like in Diet Pepsi. Mm-hmm. But it just doesn't taste good. It doesn't taste like... Pepsi One is okay and the Pepsi Max, but... Remember uh, the Clear Pepsi? Yeah, Crystal, Crystal, Crystal. Clear Pepsi. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, I have on mine the King of All Drinks, crisp and refreshing. Goes best best with rare steak, sushi, Korean rare food. <laughs> <laughs> And Mexican food. Sorry, Coke. <laughs> My number one is water. I, you can't beat water. It's it just when it, whenever you're thirsty, if you're like desperately thirsty, the thing you're craving is water. You don't you don't need any sugar. You don't need any. Sugar you don't need that taste. pussy Gatorade shit. No, of course not. You don't need electrolytes like an idiocracy. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's just so refreshing. It's it feels good on your palate. When it rushes down your throat, it's like a refreshing waterfall. Um, I don't care if it's bottled or filtered, like nausea. I don't really care if it's coming from the tap. It, as long as there isn't like shit floating around in it, it's fucking good. I love water. The only thing I have to say about water is that it has to be cold. Yeah. It, I prefer that it be on ice, but if it's just if it's just refrigerated, I'll, I'll drink it. But I, I can't really drink lukewarm water or anything like that. That's why I like the winter because it's like year-round cold water. Yes. <laughs> coming out of the tap as long as there's no shit floating around in it it's cold water's the best no no question so I'll, I'll go through a few of my honorable mentions i put down the game fuel uh code red mountain dew voltage five hour energy that's an honorable mention because it could kill you <laughs> oh can it that and energy drinks well if you drink too much of anything it could kill you not too much like water poisoning. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. yeah, Jay Vegas. Um, <laughs> I didn't say it. She was on 107.9 The End, and she murdered someone by having them drink water. Oh, Jesus. Uh, they drank a gallon of water, and... More than that, it they're, must have they're, been. You're supposed to hold your, your pee for a wee. Well, yeah, this is when the wee came out. This is when we first came out. You guys might have heard of it uh, on one of the radio stations. 
Jay Vegas worked for it, and she told everybody to hold their pee, and then the, the nurse called in, and Jay Vegas was like, what you talk about? You don't know nothing. And then the person ended up dying of water poisoning. <laughs> and she was all like, I don't see what the big deal about the Wii is, bitch. <laughs> way better than Xbox, which is what you're probably playing. I don't so, know the way you're going, the way you're changing. You're going to be like, Ugh, I'm going to get an Xbox One. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool, though, if I had an Xbox One. It's over a PlayStation. Yeah, so you could fucking be a retard. <laughs> <laughs> I slit my wrist before I buy an Xbox One. Uh, the last drink on my honorable mention list is Snapple. Apple flavor. It's like a biting into a crisp apple. What about that uh, Brett Michaels one? The Snapple Traparaca. That stuff's like a good. One of my honorable mentions is apple juice because Aaron Gerwer and I would each bring a quarter to work or to school during our senior year and buy a 50 cent can of apple juice and walk around at lunch and share it. Oh, wow. Why don't you just bring 50 cents? You can have a whole can to yourself. Because mom was a cheapskate. <laughs> Uh, my honorable mentions include root beer, mm. Mountain Dew Code Red, and Mountain Dew Game Fuel. Game Fuel would probably be on the top five if it was around a little bit more often. Uh, got a couple of hot drinks on here, like hot chocolate. I like white mocha, even though it's kind of a girly drink. It still tastes really good. And um, cranberry juice is good, but man, cran grape juice, it tastes like fucking amazing. Yeah. That stuff is so awesome. I always have that stuff at home whenever, again. If I don't have oranges available, oranges is kind of expensive at times. Uh, so sometimes I go to Cran Grape Juice if I need a little vitamin C. So those are my honorable mentions. Cool picks? I don't have any cool oh, picks. No. <laughs> no, I, I've i been, all my energy, is, my work has been, uh, I've been getting my work done like heck of fast so I could work fully on this game show. You want to do them on the fly? Sure, I could do them on the fly. You read them out to me. All right. All right. 49ers, Buccaneers. Hmm. Gold Panthers against the Pirates. Uh, are they... Who's at home? Uh, I believe the Buccaneers are at home, so... Do you know where the Buccaneers play? Uh, we just established this in okay. Tampa Bay, Correct. Florida. Florida. <laughs> right, not <laughs> not in the other eastern, like New Hampshire or Vermont. <laughs> 49ers not, not, might, might not be used to that weather down there. That's And the Niners are at home, right? No, that's right. Oh, oh, man. Uh, tough call, but I'm going to go with the 49ers, 49ers. Washington Redskins at Atlanta Falcons. At Atlanta Falcons. Oh, Falcons. Uh, got it by one point, 27, 26. <laughs> oh, man. The Falcons got tired of using the Redskins. Like, the Redskins were using them to hunt, so they got tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they turned on their masters. <laughs> Um, Chicago Bears at Cleveland Browns. Oh, you Browns. Got two shit teams right Yeah, there. I'm going Browns. No, you missed that one. Oh. Bears won 38-31. Houston Texans at Indianapolis Colts. Ooh, two Texas teams. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean. In retrospect. The, the Texans and then the Colts with the horseshoe. Right. Horseshoes go on bulls and right. horses, so that's what I meant. <laughs> uh, Colts. You got that one. 25 to 3, Colts over. Time. Oh, man. What losers. <laughs> uh, Shouldn't have changed their name. <laughs> New England Patriots at Miami Dolphins. Ooh, Patriots. Missed that one. Dolphins <gasps> won in an upset, 24 to 20. That is an upset. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles at Minnesota Vikings. Eagles. Lost that one. Oh, man. Another upset. Vikings win 48 to 30. Seattle Seahawks at New York Giants. Seahawks. We got that one. They killed them 23 to 0. Ha <laughs> Shut out. <laughs> and the, actually, there's one more uh, completed game. Uh, Buffalo Bills at Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars. No, Buffalo won 27 to 20. Oh. And the Thursday night game was San Diego Chargers at Denver Broncos. Oh, Easy. blowout Chargers. 
Oh, you know what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I was trying to be funny. 27 to 20 Chargers. What? <laughs> I was expecting the Broncos to just tear them apart. Yeah, a lot of people did. There's a couple upsets this week. Yeah, that, that's, wow. Uh, the Monday night game is the Baltimore Ravens at the Detroit Lions. Hmm. Ravens and Lions. At the at Lions? Ravens at Lions. You got Tim Allen versus Ray Lewis. <laughs> and the Lions have home court advantage. Home court, that's right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with... I have to go with the Lions. Right. I can't tell you whether or not they want to it's tomorrow. Uh, there are a few afternoon games today that are not concluded, so again, I won't be able to tell you whether or not they won it. But we got the Kansas City Chiefs at the Oakland Raiders. Oh, <laughs> Raiders, whatever. I'm going with the Chiefs. Chiefs are winning right now, 35 to 24. Raiders just need to give up. <laughs> They're so wishy-washy. They went to new, to Los Angeles and back to Oakland. <laughs> Didn't they start in Oakland? I don't know where they started. I think I, I think they started in Oakland, then went to L.A., and then was like, you know what? We can't handle this ghetto-ness, so we're going to go back. Oh, no, they said we're too hardcore for L.A. Oh, is that Let's what they said? To Oakland. I thought they were just afraid of Kobe. <laughs> that rapist. Uh, New York Jets at Carolina Panthers. <sighs> I don't think they allow pa- Panthers on Jets. Well... A New York team against another wishy-washy team. Uh, I'm, I'm going Panthers. <laughs> you mean they can't decide between North and South? Yeah. Gotcha. Um, the Panthers are leading right now, sixteen to thirteen, to go either way. Uh, Green Bay Packers at Dallas Cowboys. Oh, Cowboys. Very good. Twenty-six to three right now. It's halftime. Uh, Arizona Cardinals at Tennessee Tennessee Titans. Really. Arizona's hot. Tennessee. The Cardinals it's cold though, right now. Cardinals always had sex with their bishop boys. What? Uh, the but, but then, I, mean, I get it, but what does that have to do with Tennessee? But Titans? then Titans would eat their young. <laughs> Titans are greater than the gods, though. And it's against the Cardinals. Titans. Uh, it's still uh, third quarter. Arizona leading 13 to 10 right now, but again, a lot of game left. It's halftime in St. Louis where the Saints are playing the Cardinals. The Saints are playing the Cardinals? Oh, Oh, okay. Uh, You can't confuse me like that. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, because they're the St. Louis Cardinal uh, baseball team. No, basketball. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't keep up with this shit. Yeah. <laughs> then what's the baseball team? I'm Phoenix? Oh, oh, man. He's <laughs> throwing us for a loop here. Uh, Saints. Uh, the Saints are getting crushed right now. 24-3. to three. Oh. Another half Come on, Aaron Brooks. Aaron Brooks. <laughs> Wasn't the quarterback like 10 years ago or something? Oh, was it 10 years ago? <laughs> I thought it was just last year. <laughs> All right, the last game hasn't started yet. It's a 538 game. It's uh, Cincinnati Bengals at Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, the Bengals are going to crush him. I agree. But we'll see. Yeah. There's been a lot of upsets tonight. There have. So I think you got out of the uh, the seven or eight games that it completed, you got like five of them. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, don't you do this for your work? I do. I haven't done it last week because no. uh, I've been too busy making the game. That and um, <laughs> my play money, I, d- I decided not to do um, the pool because I used that for, we did a lottery draw for the Mega Millions. We, I think we got like 17 people and five bucks each person. Mm-hmm. We didn't win anything. Yeah. That's pretty much it. So that'll do it for episode... Uh, 32. No, no, no. Uh, 32. Spanish for 32. Yeah. Uh, This is Brandon. This is Brad. Happy hunting.